Hello guys, this is Adib. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In today's video, we will be covering the second part of your prehension and under that we will be covering the hook grip, spherical grip and lateral prehension. Apart from this, if you want to check out all my notes, you can find them on Instagram over here. So this particular section over here, you can check them out and it will be way easy for you to cover your topics. Okay, so let's get started. So as we saw in the previous video that prehension, there are two types, the power grip and the precision handling. Power grip has more of forceful act and the last part that is static phase is there. Whereas in prehension, there is manipulation of the object. I wanted to add few more points to this as I could not in the last video because that would make the video too long. So what I wanted to mention was in all these grips, the activity, the muscle activity is present throughout. Okay, there are different muscles activating in different grips. And when we mention that flexor digitorum profundus or superficialis is active, that does not mean the other is completely silent. It's always a balance of different muscles. And we look at more of which muscles are completely, there is no activity of the muscle at all, or which muscle has more dominance over the other, right? That's what we look at when we mention this uh, activity, but overall there is activity of all the muscles, including your intrinsic muscles. And this activity will highly vary with the size of the object, like how you saw in the cylindrical grip, right? The size and also how hard you are holding the object will completely change the muscle activity seen in these grasps. Now let's move on to individual grasp that is the spherical hoop and lateral prehension. So first let us start with the spherical grasp. It looks like this, right? So if you see it's very similar to a cylindrical grip. Only thing is there is some amount of abduction. There is also some amount of extensor activity, right? These are the two main things that are seen in the spherical grasp. Now let's have a look at what I've written. So over here, as I mentioned, it's basically a cylindrical grasp with your fingers spread. Okay, this is the first point, which is very important. Then second point is interosseous activity in this spherical grasp is very high. Basically, what I've done over here is filtered out the major points so that it's very easy for you to remember and understand what these grasps are all about. Okay. Then the third point is, as I mentioned, this finger spread over here, that is your MCPs are abducted, but they are also stabilized because they are in abduction position. They are also stabilized by your adductors and abductors. So what happens is in a spherical grasp, you can see they are in a semi flexion position, your MCPs, right? All these MCPs are in semi flexion. This would be complete flexion. This would be complete extension. They are in semi flexion position and they are also abducted. And because of this, it's a very loose pack position for these joints and they are not very stable in this position. And this joint gets its stability through your abductors and adductors that are present at the side of the MCP, right? They work together to create this co-contraction and provide its stability along with your extensor muscles. So that's how these uh, MCPs get their stability. Next, if you see, I mentioned it is dominated by flexors, but also extensors, right? It, what does extensor do? It plays an important role of opening the hand and releasing the object. So if you are holding some object which is spherical, right? First you have to open the hand so that you can grasp and then once you hold it and when you have to release it, you have to again open. So that's where the opening is when the extensors are firing, right? So those are the major points under your spherical grasp. Now let's move on to the hook grip. So under hook grip, what we need to know is it includes palm, it can include palm, but it will never include thumb. Okay, this is very important. Thumb will be always in moderate to full amount of extension as you can see over here, right? And it, you can involve a little bit of palm with more flexion at the fingers. Now, fingers play a major role over here in the hook grasp and this muscle power to these fingers is, is given completely by your FDP and FDS. Now, when is FDP working more and when is FDS working more? This is completely based on where the grip is held. Basically, if you hold the grip over here distally, that means your DIPs are working more. That means your flexor profundus will be more working, right? Flexor digitorum profundus. And if it's more proximally where your 
proximal interphalanges are working that means flexor digitorum superficialis will be working more so that's the difference when they work more and apart from that there is also interosseal activity that is seen let's have a look at that so as i mentioned over here interosseal activity is also seen in hook grip and they might help in prevent clawing that's what was seen but again it was not seen the activity was not seen at all the fingers so we don't really know but that's all we have under the hook grip now let's move on to the final one that is the lateral prehension in lateral prehension what you do is there is contact between your adjacent fingers like this right and the paper is squeezed between them and this grip is not really powerful if you look at it it's just holding something between the fingers right most of the times it's said the cigarette the grip for cigarette if you're smoking a cigarette that's when you use lateral prehension and if you see it's not very stable it's not very strong so why is it under power grip that is because if you can't really manipulate the object too much with this grip so it's neither your precision grip because in precision you will be able to move around and do a lot of things with the object that you're holding but over here in prehension you can't really do much just holding the object that's why it comes under power grip although it's not very powerful so as i mentioned over here it is contact between the adjacent fingers and these adjacent fingers the mcps they adduct and abduct that means this one will be adducting right because it's moving away from the thumb and this will be abducting because it is moving towards the thumb so that's how this grip is formed and this is one power grip that is dominated by your extensors and lumbricals because you can see the hand and the fingers are in extension right and the lumbricals is also a playing a major role over here so that's all we have for this video what did we see spherical grip is very similar to the cylindrical plus finger spread hook grip is dominated by fingers and palm no thumb and the major muscle activity is fdp and fds based on the position and then under lateral prehension it's not very strong but it is called it is classified under power grip because it is has that static phase in it and it cannot manipulate the object and the contact is between the two adjacent fingers right so with that we finish off this topic in next video i will try to cover the next part of prehension that is precision handling and then we will move on to elbow complex biomechanics so stay tuned for that that's all for today guys thank you for watching